Welcome back to Lab Rat Scientific. It occurred to me the other day, you have no idea who I am or what my credentials are. So I figured I'd spend this episode giving you a little bit of information about myself. Now, way back in the early 70s, when I was in elementary school, I found a model rocket, a lot like this one, stuck in the ground while I was coming home from school. My brother and I subsequently put wheels on that rocket and shot it down the street with disastrous results, but I think that was the beginning of my interest in science. A little bit later on, I got a Gilbert chemistry set for Christmas and a Radio Shack electronics kit, and I did all kinds of experiments in my bedroom. I built all sorts of gizmos in the basement, and I spent a lot of time in the woods near my house learning about nature and stuff. And I moved on to high school, and I had quite a few friends. I played sports, but I kept my interest in science. I took lots of math classes, a lot of science classes, and drafting classes, because I knew I wanted to be an aerospace engineer when I went to college. I went to school at North Carolina State University in Raleigh, North Carolina. There I studied aerospace engineering. After my first year, my grades were good enough to allow me to land a job at NASA at Goddard Space Flight Center's Wallops Flight Facility. At Wallops, they worked on huge scientific balloons and sounding rockets. I worked there for five semesters and worked in the machine shop building parts. I worked on Wallops Island and assembled launch vehicles. I worked in the sounding rocket program doing flight analysis and the balloon program. Now, while I was there, I accumulated quite a bit of knowledge on the basics of rocketry, and I applied that to my interests while I was in college. Some of the things I did was take model airplane radio control systems and create a telemetry system that I got the data out using software I wrote on a Commodore 64. I also built electronics to deploy parachutes, and I designed, built, and tested, and flew my own rocket motors. Now, it was really interesting those times, and I learned a lot. And then, in 1986, I graduated and became full-time employee at Wallops Flight Facility. When I was full-time with NASA, I started off as a recovery system engineer. I designed parachutes, some designed to deploy at 300,000 feet just outside the atmosphere. I also provided sustaining engineering for recovery systems to make sure we could get scientific payloads back after flight. Now, this is a sounding rocket model. The actual rocket is 60 or 70 feet tall, and it can achieve altitudes greater than 1,500 kilometers. So let's take a quick look at a video showing a sounding rocket lifting off. As an engineer, I engaged in a lot of extracurricular educational activities. As a matter of fact, I founded a nonprofit organization that would help local high school kids do their science fair projects. As part of that program, I developed this wind tunnel, I developed a towing tank to allow students to test boat models, I built all sorts of equipment. Now, that program quickly evolved into a hands-on science museum, which I ran for 10 years. I developed over 30 exhibits for that museum, and I developed countless programs for students in kindergarten through sixth grade on Saturdays talking about all sorts of science topics. Meanwhile, back at NASA, I eventually became a project manager, where I led small engineering teams that developed the scientific payloads for the sounding rockets and took them in the field to launch them. Now, with sounding rockets, you launch from all over the world including sites from Alaska and White Sands, New Mexico, Norway, Sweden, Australia, the Quadrant and Toa in the Pacific, Brazil, and even Puerto Rico. Now, I spent a lot of time with some incredible scientists and some really bright engineers, so I learned a lot. Now, STEM education was still very important to me, so I still pursued extracurricular educational activities as well as educational activities for NASA. Let's fast forward to 2001. That's when I became the head of the NASA Sounding Rockets program. I ran that program for 16 years up until my recent retirement in January of 2018. Now, during that period, I worked hard with NASA headquarters and managed to substantially increase the budget so we could launch more rockets from more places around the world and conduct more world-class science. Now, during that period, we launched hundreds of rockets, and we even worked with Marshall Space Flight Center to develop a new rocket motor for the program. Now, as a program head, I had the authority to create projects and programs. And so I created a lot of educational projects for high school students and college students to allow them to fly their own experiments into space. I also developed a space camp for blind students and ran that for three years. I also developed a program for high school teachers to learn about rocket physics so they could take that back to their classrooms and have their own rocket clubs and things like that. Now here's a little bit of feedback from some of those teachers. I was also the lead engineering mentor for a local FIRST Robotics team for three years. 
I've received the NASA Exceptional Leadership Medal and the NASA Exceptional Achievement Medal, which is NASA's highest award. Now, since I'm retired from NASA and no longer work for them, I'm in no way implying that NASA sponsors Lab Rat Scientific. Well, that about sums it up. I've been a rocket and space geek for over 45 years, and I think I have a lot of knowledge and expertise that I want to pass on to the next generation of engineers and scientists. So I hope you'll join me for future episodes of Lab Rat Scientific.